Hello, beautiful people. My name is Angela, and I'm from British Columbia, Canada. You're watching Trucker Josh and the Diesel Weasel. Good morning, everybody. We are just rolling out the Simonson Truck Plaza in Grand Forks, North Dakota. We didn't make it as far as we wanted to yesterday. But that's because my engine decided it needed to uh, do two regens. Well, actually, it needed one regen, but I messed up the first one right at the end. Then I had to redo it all over again, because that's how this truck works. Thanks, Volvo. So I sat there for two hours at the border. They're just on the US side of the border at the truck stop. They're waiting for it to regen properly. And then we got here, got tired, went to bed. End of story. Today's a new story, a new page. We're on our way down to, uh, well, Bryan County, Georgia. Uh, it's a town called Elbel, Elabel? Elabel, Georgia. We're delivering these fiberglass fuel tanks for underground at a new Love's Travel Plaza. So it's a three day drive from here. It's uh, 2,700 and some. Karen, why aren't you telling me where to go? You forget? Come on, Karen, get with it. We're already moving. It's about 2,700 kilometers from here, I think, which is uh, two and a half days of driving, a little over two and a half days of driving, but we'll make, it'll be three days. have about five dollars worth of tolls Proceed to the highlighted route there you are Karen nice to see you thanks for joining us uh, yeah we got about uh, we got one toll to go through once we get into Illinois of course we're gonna go uh, down I-39 I believe that is straight south from Rockford and there's one toll we got to pay and it's five bucks Green light means go. <clears throat> Unless if this guy wants to go straight through, what are you doing? Oh, you used your turn signal. Awesome. You go first, buddy. I'll wait. I'm slower than you. There you go. Wonderful. Plus, I got to get right across here anyway. I'm turning right, right here. Wunderbar. Oh, and a pedestrian too. Okay. Okay, well, I'm a pedestrian a lot of the time too. I'll wait for you, buddy. You want me to go? No, you go. No, you go. Now, I insist you go. No problem, bud. Good for you. Keep walking. It's healthy for you. You see, if the pedestrian has the right of way at a crosswalk like that, I always stop. <coughs> Even if they tell me to keep going, I'll stop because they have the right of way. What it bothers me is like uh, when there is no crosswalk, like you, and you're trying to get across the road, and people stop and completely obstruct traffic just to try to let you cross, and I keep telling them, no, you have the right of way. You keep going. I don't have the right of way here. Maybe I'm the only one that thinks of that. <laughs> Let's get on the road. Oh, construction already. Wonderful. I love starting the day with construction. Continue on this road for 124 kilometers. You know, I wake up in the morning and I think, man, I hope there's lots of construction today. It just makes my day. Straight across into this lane. I gotta give truck wash. My truck is filthy. It's a dirty girl. Well, we're pulling into the Petro Pass, not the Petro Pass, that's in Canada. Petro Stopping Center here in Fargo, North Dakota. In 200 meters, turn right on 49th Street South. What do you know, Karen? I know where I'm going, I'm the boss. We're going to the Blue Beacon. This truck desperately needs a truck wash from our trip out to Alberta. We are filthy, filthy, filthy. You know, the trailer's not mine, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay to get it washed anyway, just cause I'm, you know, I want to have a clean unit to roll down into the south. Hopefully I won't hit any bad weather from here to the south, but I mean, we'll see. 
I want to have a clean unit though, the whole thing. So I'll wash the truck and it's not that much more to wash the trailer too. And you know, I'll do a nice thing. I'll do a favor for them. I won't even ask for reimbursement. It's, I'm doing it for myself. I'm not doing it for them. I want to have a clean unit. I want to look good. And the whole thing is just filthy. And it would look really weird if I had a really clean truck and a filthy trailer. I don't want that. It's got to look good. It's got to look good. So that's okay. Maybe I'll keep the receipt. <laughs> Maybe I'll keep it. We'll see. <laughs> Let's get into lying here first. Oh, and they have a... Oh, there's nobody in line here? I was expecting to have to wait a while. Maybe we can practically drive right in. Holy smokes. Holy smokes there. Oh. Oh, you look at that there. Is that one closed or is that one open? I think they're both open. So nobody, nobody's telling me not to go into this one, so. Here we go. See if they tell me to go to the other door. Well, they got me in right away. This is like the quickest time they've ever gotten me in here. I don't think I've ever been able to just drive up to the Blue Beacon here in Fargo and just drive right in and start getting washed right away. This is awesome. So this won't take anything out of my day. This is where I was hoping to spend the night. You have six hours and 13 minutes of remaining drive time. Thanks, Karen. But we're gonna get the whole unit washed. And I'll let you know what the cost is, because usually I just do the truck, right? Because this is my truck, it's not my trailer. And why would I wash someone else's trailer all the time, right? But I'm, I'm taking this one down to the south. It's a little bit of a special trip for me. I wanna have a whole clean unit. I'll keep the receipt for the trailer. I'll see, I'll see. It's, it's not my trailer. I'll see if they'll... <laughs> well, but, but whatever, if they don't want to, I didn't ask them if I could wash their trailer or if they wanted it washed. So if, if they say, hey, you did that on your own for yourself, too bad, then whatever, it's not a big deal. At least I'll know how much it costs to wash the whole unit, right? I doubt they'll they'll say that though. They're, they're really good people. When I tell them I've washed their equipment for them, I'm sure they'll be appreciative and be like, oh, thanks, it needed it. Here, we'll pay for it. What I'm trying to say, I guess, is I'm prepared to pay for it myself. So that I can look good rolling down to the south. I just hope I don't hit any really bad weather that gets it all dirty again on the way down. That would be terrible. I should have checked the weather. Let's check my weather app right now, actually. I'll check it with you. Uh, weather and radar. Weather radar. Let's see. We're going down to the south. Come on, load up. What? What is this? Okay. We're gonna look for uh, uh, da, 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 rain and snow. Nope, we're not gonna hit any rain or snow. All the way down to Georgia. Sweet. Clear skies all the way down. That's awesome. Let's uh, check for tomorrow too. Good. So this uh, should work out pretty well. I'm excited. I wish I got to go down to the south more often. I used to be in Georgia all the time. You guys remember that? Have you been watching that long? I used to pull dry vans. I, I did that for six years. And we had regular contracts that were in uh, around Atlanta, Georgia. And so I was in Florida all the time. I was out in Newfoundland. I went up to Yukon once in Canada. I went everywhere except for the southwest of the United States. So I really wish we'd sort of gain some contracts down there because I'd love to go there. Not California, but you know, I'd love to go to, you know, Utah, Arizona. I think it'd be a lot of fun, but Texas. I haven't been to Texas. Oh, I don't think we've ever gone to Texas, have we? I have before, but it was in the past when I was running for someone else. Alright, I think they're going to need me to move up here soon. Just doing the final rinse here. So the total came out to uh, $113 American. Came out to $155 Canadian. So the trailer was $41.50 American. 
and in Canadian that's about 50 bucks. So it was fifty dollars to wash the trailer. So usually the truck wash, what I what I do, like what I've told you guys before, is I get the uh, the classic wash plus the Rain X. Nope, oh, we're good to go. Right on. One second, let me get out of here. Right on. Thanks guys. Right on. Okay, so I get the classic wash with the Rain X, the undercarriage wash, and the motor washed. Usually that costs me about seventy-five to eighty dollars American, a hundred dollars Canadian. Uh, this time I added on the classic trailer wash, and that added on forty-one fifty American, fifty dollars Canadian. So not bad. $150 for a truck wash. I know it sounds pretty steep, especially to you guys probably who don't drive trucks and who just, you know, are used to paying 15 bucks to wash your car. It's 100 bucks to wash this baby. 150 to add the trailer, huh? to have the trailer washed too. But I'll, I'll bring them the receipt. I'll see what they say. I'll see what they, I'll, I'll be ready for them to say no, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll be appreciative that I washed all the salt off the trailer because our trailers get so dirty and no one ever washes them. No one ever does. Because who would? Who would spend their own money? Yeah. Except for this crazy guy to wash the trailer, but I, I like to look good. And I'm, I'm driving a Volvo, I understand. So there's only so good I can look, but you gotta try your hardest to at least try, you know? <laughs> I already got those points against me. Not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with a Volvo, but if you're trying to look good, Volvo is not usually the truck that you buy in North America. But this old girl's treating me well. She's special because she's mine. Uh, uh, I want a Kenworth W9. Like any good North American. <laughs> or Peterbilt. Freightliner. You know, something built or engineered and designed here. But uh, Volvos are very good trucks. They actually have a very high safety rating. They're a Swedish truck, so they're a European truck. And they're the only European truck in North America. So, uh... I think they're the only trucks with a crash test safety rating as well. I don't know why the American trucks don't do a crash test, but uh, at least this truck is safe. This truck has an airbag on the driver's side, not for the passenger though, because I guess Volvo doesn't care about the passenger. There's an airbag over here, and I'm not too sure if the new trucks, I'm pretty sure all new trucks have airbags, but uh, I know Volvo was like one of the first ones to come out with an airbag for trucks. And uh, they're good trucks, they're good, it's just... Uh, if you want that prestige and that uh, respect that comes from driving a sweet classic truck on the highways of North America, like of Canada and the United States, you want to have a long nose Peterbilt, Kenworth, or Freightliner. My opinion only, okay? Don't I don't speak for all truckers, okay? That's just in my opinion. So one day, one day, but this truck is a great tool right now. She's been treating me well, she's running well. The engine is solid, doesn't leak any oil. Uh, she's over a million kilometers already, still going strong, oil's still good, doesn't even need a rebuild yet. They go, they, you know, you got a lot of room, a lot of head space, a lot of good things about Volvo. The looks on the outside aren't one of them. Hashtag my opinion. So uh, we're gonna wait here just a couple of minutes. I'm gonna have a little snack and then we'll head back out on the road. No, 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 no. The forecast said clear skies all the way down to Georgia. What's this? What's this? Even my wipers are mad. They do that when they're cold. I need to replace the motor soon. Look at this. Never trust the weather ank. What do we call the weather anchors? The weather people. Look at this. So much for a clean truck. Not cool. We're not even up to Minneapolis yet. <clears throat> Still on the west side of the city. Well, good thing it only missed it for about five minutes. Looks like we're in the clear right now. We're in Minneapolis going around on the 694 and 
I just got passed by an ambulance. You can still see them over there in the distance. The ambulance is down here. They have blue lights with the red lights for some reason. That's, uh, that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how bright those things are. Like, you wanted to make sure I knew you were coming. You know, mission accomplished. Wow, I still got purple spots in my eyes. Their LED little flashy emergency lights, they're blinding. Like, I let him pass me, obviously, right? And then he sat in front of me because he's going about the same speed as traffic. I had to slow down and let him get further ahead because I was getting a headache from his red and blue strobe light bulbs that were blinding me. I couldn't see where I was going. Like, never mind complaining about people with their high beams on anymore. I, I'll take somebody with those bright LED high beams in my face over that ambulance driving in front of me. Like... I was thinking, man, those lights are so bright, you're going to need another ambulance to come scrape me off the pavement because I can't see where I'm going. I don't think you're helping very much. You're just causing more problems. <laughs> Same thing with police lights. When they got someone pulled over on the side of the road at night, like, yeah, you got to slow down, move over. But you can't even see the lanes. Some of the time, those lights are so bright. And you don't know if the officer is like walking around the vehicle or if they're doing a sobriety test with the other driver or what they're doing. You don't know if they're inside the vehicle. You don't know where the officer is. So you try to go way around, right? But the whole time as you're approaching the police vehicle with his lights on on the shoulder, you're just straining your eyes getting this headache. And then you pass them. You got this big purple spot in your eyes for the next 10 minutes, you know? Like, the emergency lights of today, I understand you, you want to be able to be seen during the day. Karen, I'm telling a story. This is important. Because I, I I always support all the you know the first responders and police, but man, I wish they had a dimmer switch for their for their emergency lights at night. Just a little bit. Just just tone it down just a little bit. Because I know you have to have them super bright so that we see them during the daylight hours, right? Continue on this road for 21 kilometers. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, Karen. Stay on point here. If they could just like have an automatic dimmer switch or something, it would it would it would be so awesome. It'd be so awesome. I think. What do you guys think? You guys have all you guys all know what I'm talking about. These really really bright emergency lights. Okay. Uh, I know that they're important. But don't you think they could? turn them down just a little bit at night? I don't know. Am I the only one? I'm probably just the only one. I don't know. He's complaining again! And I guess we know what that ambulance was for now. Apparently there was an accident up ahead. A mile or two. So we're waiting. It's down to one lane up there, they say. A lot of these people are taking this exit here. Exit 41A and B. But I took a look at it already on the GPS and it's not a viable alternative for me. It's, I'd be better off just staying here on the road. Google says it's about a 28 minute delay, but we're moving along pretty well. Not too sure what happened. I think it's, there's an un underpass we gotta get under yet. Well, this guy wants to get in here now. You guys aren't just passing me on the right and trying to get in front of me, are you? I gotta start paying attention to my mirror. Because if I see anyone do that, because they do that to me quite often, and more often than it should happen, what you'll do is you'll see cars behind you. They'll cut out into like this turn lane and then they just want to get in front of you and they'll cut back into the lane in front of you if you give them space. If I see you doing that, I'm not letting you back in. Nope, if you're that impatient, I gotta wait here, you gotta wait here too just so you can be in front of the semi. A lot of people do that. It's angrifying. So here's our problem why we're not moving. This lane on the right is still exiting, right? It's an exit only. These two lanes on the left, they are the through lanes. Now there's been dozens of people already that have been pulling out of these through lanes into that exit only lane there that's supposed to exit and then at the last minute trying to get back into these through lanes in front of as many vehicles as they can which means that this lane that i'm in here the through lane isn't moving very well see look those guys are doing it up there again too a couple of semis were doing this and it brought the entire freeway to a standstill because a couple of truckers wanted to get in front of all the traffic i saw them pull out and i know that they saw the sign that it was an exit only 
before they did that. And then, yeah, they, they, the whole freeway came to a stop because those drivers then had to wait for someone to let them back in. And someone was dumb enough to let them back into the through lane. I wouldn't have done it. You got yourself into that mess. Now you're in the exit lane. Now you exit and you find a different way to get back on the freeway. But you're already committed to exiting. You're in that lane. Now you got to exit. Right? That's, that's the way I think. If you didn't want to exit, you knew full well that was an exit lane. You just wanted to get in front of traffic. Not cool. Look at this van. The van's doing the same thing right here. This guy in front of us is leaving lots of room so tons of people get in front of him. Hold the line! Okay, there we go. Good. Now traffic is moving better. You see, because people aren't cutting in front of us anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I drive for a living and I, I just see these things and I know how traffic works. But, you know, they know better. You know that. You know they know better. But they just do it anyways. So anyway, now that we're through that, I haven't seen the accident yet, so maybe it's already cleaned up. But... We're getting close to the east side of Minneapolis, where we're pretty much almost at the Wisconsin border. I'm guessing we'll be... Yeah, well, I know we'll be sleeping in Wisconsin somewhere tonight. I'm just not too sure where yet. Maybe around Black River Falls? I don't know. We'll see how far I get. Alrighty, we're pulling into Black River Falls, and I'm thinking this is where we're going to spend the night. I'm not too tired yet, but I, I want to take the time tonight to have a shower, to uh, lay back, maybe watch a Netflix video that I that I downloaded while I was at home. Maybe just you have arrived relax at your a little bit. On the right side, find J Travel Plaza number 756. Okie dokie there, Karen. Thanks for that. I'm going to grab some fuel right now first. And uh, this way I'll get a nice parking spot. We started... Or we'll end nice and early. We can start early tomorrow morning. I think that'll be good. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's 9.30 now. We'll see. Let's grab our fuel, then we'll make our decision. But I'm pretty sure I'm just going to park and stay here for the night. From here, we're 1,953 kilometers from our destination in Georgia. We can do that in two days. 